So we have a wide mix of uh, expertise and background and perspective. I hope in the next 20 minutes uh, we can get some uh, words of wisdom uh, about, in fact, what we're all going to talk about or try to try to get some get some insight into what's going to happen to the internet in the next 25, 30 years. Uh, in terms of the technology, the applications, and uh, reaching different kinds and different 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 parts of the world and so on. What are going to be the impacts of the technology and the applications that runs on the internet today? Well, uh, I don't want to take up more time. Uh, let's go in this direction. How about in, for first round for, uh, for Mr. Brandenburg to tell us a bit about your perspective first, and then we'll go on. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, looking forward, I think it's always good looking back a little bit as well. Mm. And I remember the days when internet all was about text. Mm. Then we got audio, music, speech, voice over IP. And nowadays, I think video accounts for really most of the data traffic on the internet. And that certainly will go on. And the challenges we see there are still to get standards, to get interoperability. So that's a technical problem, but one of uh, people working together as well. So I'm a fan of standards. I've been a member of the Moving Pictures Experts Group as an audio expert. Uh, 25 years ago, 26 years ago already, and we need more of these. Um, not competing standards. We say too many competing standards these days, I would say. Um, and there are connected problems, but that's more for other people to solve. But I see all these issues about authenticity of media, for example, uh, to be solved technically. Uh, but people need to work together to get that, just as some first ideas. Mm. But how do we, how do we prevent competing standards when you know we have a free and open internet? Exactly. That's <laughs> we got we got some uh, groups which try to do uh, standards and interoperability. Uh, there's the big international organizations like the ISO, the ITU, the IAC, the IATF. And we have companies who try to do things on their own. And we've seen that sometimes uh, these companies win and a lot of times these standards groups win. Uh, but uh, that's something in the end the market will decide. Thank you. Uh, moving forward uh, to the uh, developing world in particular, you know, uh, whether or not, for example, take picking on what Mr. Brandenburg uh, talked about, uh, standard, is that so much an issue or actually access, you know, basic access would be the main issue. What does uh, uh, Mahabia, you would be able to enlighten us about uh, how we're going to be able to reach the next billion on the internet? Uh, talking about the challenges, you know, there are so many challenges and uh, I'm not familiar with the challenges of the developed countries uh, because I am from, uh, you know, one of the least developed countries uh, in the world, Nepal. And, uh, you know, there are so many challenges uh, that I know of, uh, especially all these, you know, developing countries, uh, least developed countries are facing uh, there. So, so rather than like, uh, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the standards, everything, the main challenge that I have seen uh, in the developing, develop, least developed countries is to how to reach the, you know, people, the poorest, the poor people, or the people, you know, be, uh, below poverty line, uh, or people living in the remote areas where no commercial, you know, service providers uh, would like to go and provide uh, and connect those people. That's the challenges, uh, you know, I have faced. So I work mostly in, in, in grassroots level. So I don't know much about, you know, these, you know, the 
the le regulatory issues and the technical issues. You know, the project I started there uh, was not because you know I uh, you know I am expert in that area, but uh, you know so that was the need. So so uh, that was uh, you know the need for the people uh, to communicate and uh, to get at least uh, some benefit uh, from the technology. Uh, so that's the challenge I have seen. Mm. So how do, what do you think are the biggest challenges? You said that you, you face a lot of challenges. Uh, the first, I mean, the, the big challenge is in the in least couple of countries, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, the main, most of these, you know, leaders, political leaders uh, in, in the government, uh, they are not aware of it. They are not, you know, some of them know, but most of them don't know how important the the internet or the this uh, um, internet is, uh, you know, for the development of the country. They have many priorities. They have, you know, priorities to build infrastructure, road, electricity, you know, education, some other things. But it's still, uh, they haven't realized it. So uh, the challenge is how to, you know, how to convince the, you know, leaders uh, in the least uh, developed countries uh, to uh, to make them feel uh, the importance of uh, the 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 internet uh, and the importance of the internet uh, to provide basic services uh, for the people. Mm, thank you. Well, uh, Radia, uh, uh, I, I guess you don't have that problem in your country in, about the leaders not realizing how important the internet is. Maybe they know too much about how, how important it is. So what's your reaction to uh, what uh, Karl Heinz and uh, Mahabia has talked about? Well, it's definitely um, exciting in terms of education, bringing education to the, um, the it, education with the building may not scale to all parts. And um, the idea that at all phases of your life there there's information there that uh, you could learn um, from, it would be nice if we could make it more organized so that it would be easier um, to pick a topic. But the, the scary side is that not everything on the internet is correct, <laughs> by all means. And um, separating out um, the actual stuff that's true, given that there's um, no overhead whatsoever to posting anything and no downside of posting absolutely incorrect stuff, that will be a challenge. Um, but yeah, another pet peeve of mine is when people blame stupid users for clicking on the wrong links or opening infected documents. Now there's no excuse for it being dangerous to click on anything. Now it might be that you'd read something offensive, but it shouldn't break your computer. Um, and um, likewise, um, if you open a document, it should just turn data into pictures on your screen. It, it, there shouldn't be any way, but there is, unfortunately, um, to have a malicious document that can infect your machine. So it would be really nice if we could rethink everything to, um, um, to figure out how to make all of this safe, rather than thinking that the problem is educating the users. Well, uh, that's a great point that you brought about because uh, you had a great role in developing the protocols of the IP uh, protocol that we use today. Now, what do you think if we are going to redevelop and uh, restart all over again with a safer protocol, you know, deal with some of these issues on the more uh, basic or infrastructure level, would that help? But can it, can it be done in today's world when our internet already reached uh, how many billions of people already today? Uh, can we re-engineer the whole thing? Right, so my philosophy has always been that the network should just work. It should be self-organizing. And um, um, then people told me that there are some customers that really enjoy configuring things, so fine. <laughs> if you want to configure things, I'll give you knobs to diddle with, but you don't have to touch them. And if you do touch them, any setting of the knobs will still work. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, indeed, the basic infrastructure should be you know, really, really easy to use. Um, there are so many things that are just um, so configuration intensive and not, any good excuse for that. 
um, somewhat designed by engineers who've never actually met a, a human being who <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> who actually enjoy you know getting down into the guts and and doing it all but it's it's not really um, necessary so that could be redesigned um, the the basic underlying stuff is not really what makes the internet the internet it's um, it's sort of like English is a language it's only one language and it's not a very good language but it does everything we need it to do and if it turns out there's some concept you can't express in English people invent new words all the time so um, it's really the higher layer things in terms of how the internet is used that will are the challenges for how to uh, be able to separate um, real information, how to organize information so if you decide you want to uh, learn mechanical engineering, there's somehow easy access, easy organized stuff online for free that you can use. Well, other panelists, Carl, Carl Heinz, what do you, what's your reaction to that, uh, you know, from your perspective, particularly yeah. working with the media? It rings with some ideas which have been around for quite some time, but not that successful. One is, of course, to have all the infrastructure uh, for secure certificates so we know who's on the other end. Uh, like email encryption has been around for a long time, or email signatures, but it's, it. it's a usability question. So that's exactly what she said. So we need things to be done in a way that people don't need to think about it. It's just there. And then, of course, there's the question of authentication. Of course, that, on the other hand, has a problem with privacy. If we have to sign everything, uh, where is privacy in the end? So that's um, really interesting questions to solve uh, for other people, but engineers should look at these questions as well. I've been always in favor of engineers having to look at the consequences of what they are doing and think of the people. Yeah. Um, Can I react to that? Um, yes, yeah, so um, you brought up um, certificates and all that. Yes, the mathematics of that is all beautiful, and you can argue about the format of certificates, but the real hard part are things like names. So you have this wonderful um, certificate saying that um, this key belongs to Radio Perlman. Well, that's fine, because I'm the only Radio Perlman on Earth. But what do you do about all the John Smiths? And, um, you know, like with email, um, y you know, at a company, there's, John, there's seven John Smiths, so then you have to use middle initials, and some of them you have to... Now, if I were running a company, I would say, um, look, you, you have great credentials, but we already have a John Smith here, so we can't hire you. And so, <laughs> soon parents would learn to be as creative as, as my parent if they, they want their kid to be able to get jobs. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, seriously, that's an incredible challenge. Um, even, you know, credentials. So you know this is a particular person. Is he really a certified doctor? And you've had random people wander into hospitals doing surgery. That, um, so it's, this is the part that's really hard, not the actual mathematics. Fully agree. <laughs> Mahabia, what, what, what do you think? Is it a, a, as big a problem about uh, security, privacy, identity in, in your part of the world? Uh, Actually, I know that security and privacy has been, uh, you know, great challenges uh, uh, in the developed countries, and uh, and uh, people initially, I, I think, uh, when they in invented, you know, the internet and the, you know, World War Word, they didn't thought about, you know, the security problem, but it came, and I hope that this uh, security problem will uh, be solved. I mean, there are, you know. You know, innovators. You know, uh, you know, experts who, who will be able to solve uh, step by step in future. Uh, there's something uh, people will be able to do that. Uh, but uh, especially uh, in my world, especially when uh, I work in the in the remote areas, I work mostly uh, to connect the villages. Uh, you know, in remote areas 
where there are no roads, you know, no telephones, and uh, so that part of the world, I mean, security is not that expensive. It's just uh, ha uh, not, uh, no, not uh, security is not that, uh, you know, big uh, issues there. We just have to teach people how to use internet, uh, how to get information, and uh, we, we are trying to bring, you know, especially use the technology for educating people for education, uh, for health, and uh, and for some e-commerce purposes. So that's why I, mean, I haven't seen much difficulties, especially in the remote areas, in the uh, rural areas uh, of a country, uh, in, in my country, and uh, it will not be that issues but it surely is a big issue in, in developed countries. Mm. Well, uh, what, I'm try uh, what I'm getting from the discussion so far is that uh, if we, and apparently we cannot totally just depend on the, rely on the engineers. And uh, more user input about, you know, how they perceive the technology to be used and so on might be as important. So my question is actually, in the next round of the uh, inductees, for the uh, uh, Internet Hall of Fame, in addition to pioneers, innovators, and, and what's the other category? Uh, 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 should we actually have a category for users? You know, after all, Internet Society is uh, supposed to be a, uh, an organization that uh, represent or, uh, uh, you know, any Internet users can be one of our members. So wouldn't that be a cool idea? What do you think, any of you? What well, is the role of the users actually working with the engineers to come up with solutions like you were striving for, you, you were talking about striving for? Right, I, I wouldn't pick some random person and say this is representative of a, a typical user. Um, but um, yes, having people who come up with Im imaginative uses of the internet, like for instance, um, this um, MOOC concept, the um, multi-something online courses, um, um, massively... Um, o online, uh, yeah. yeah, open. <laughs> open <laughs> online yeah. um, courses is an incredibly exciting uh, concept. And so, um, yeah, I, I imagine there will be a lot of things like that that people could be recognized for. Karl Heinz and uh, Mahabia? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one idea can be, you know, to recognize the, especially the communities uh, in, uh, in, in uh, developing countries uh, who, you know, uh, work actively uh, uh, to, um, to, you know, uh, the expand the use, uh, to connect the r uh, rural areas and expand the use of the 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 internet you know among the you know people in the rural areas so if we have something like uh, you know uh, induct uh, these these communities very active communities mm. from around the world who are very hard uh, to bring the benefit of the you know the technology uh, that would be good um, I second the idea of having uh, really. Uh, some appreciation for the creative use, the new types of content. And in the history of media, new media have been around for a long time. And always first some people from technology created uh, the ideas how to do things better, like TV, like MP3 in the end. When we did MP3, we didn't think about podcasts. <laughs> So later on, we got people from creative industries having new ideas what to do with this, these technologies. And that's really part of getting things out into the world. So we might consider, you know, just like the Nobel Prize, they could be awarded to an individual or an organization or a group of people, right? So that would be an interesting idea to, to, uh, to look forward to. Now, I think uh, I, it, we just about reached exactly 20 minutes so uh, it might be a good uh, time to uh, to for all of us to thank our uh, panelists uh, for their sharing of their thoughts and uh, um, you know let's have a round of applause to our panelists